I was approached by Leica to use their S system camera and they gave me one to kind of have a go with and I loved the camera. I thought it was a brilliant combination of a high res, almost like a medium format resolution file, but in a 35 millimeter kind of experience of the body. After I'd used it for a while, they sent me some magazines they did called S Magazine and then they suggested the possibility of me doing a whole issue of the magazine. I'd always thought that it would be really interesting to do a hair book where you take hairdressers and you give them the opportunity to, to do any, anything they want, really. It's very unusual for a hairstylist to get the opportunity to express themselves that directly and that with that much freedom. And they really are artists, so I just said to Leica, why don't we do something that's based on hair? Um, and they, they went for it, yeah. The camera we use for the whole of the issue is the S3, which is the new Leica. And uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic camera. Um, I love the autofocus on it. The weight of it is really good, which if you shoot every day, the weight of something really means a lot. The um, lenses are fantastic. And they're very good in, in low light and on low f-stop. And it really suits beauty and hair to shoot on that kind of low f-stop. So. I knew that there was an opportunity for me to really be able to use the camera and show the different ways of expressing um, hair. And that sounds really sort of a bit wanky, but it's quite unique for a camera to be able to do lots of different styles of photography. Um, so I suppose from the beginning, I really wanted to have a project we did with S, S Magazine that had a wide range of genre and subject matter within the images so sort of on you know on location in the studio with low f-stop lots of different lighting scenarios to show what it could do to show what i could do with the camera and what what the camera could do well alan and i had been talking for a long time about doing um a project together where he came up with the idea because he's one of the the kind of hairstylists that when you're on set He's very much a creative director. He likes to be involved in, I mean, I think he, if he could, he'd pick up the camera and do it himself. He'd always had this idea to work with fiber optics and we'd gone back and forth and using mirrors and using lots of different techniques. And uh, we did a test that it really, it just really worked straight away. The fiber optics became kind of jewelry and then the hair matched the fiber optics. So, that was in, in, essentially inherently his idea. It was nothing to do with me. I didn't kind of push him in any direction. Wendy is literally the best hairdresser I've ever worked with in terms of commercial um, imagery. She is the best hairstylist for doing, say, a, a Pantene, like Stills campaign. She can make hair do anything. She was very inspired by a trip to LA where she saw these kids downtown and she wanted to kind of embrace just like, you know, what happens on the street in the UK and all kind of major cities, which is an ex expression, people expressing themselves. So her shoot is kind of an opposite of what she would normally do. So she wanted to kind of deconstruct it a little bit. So hers is deconstruction. Ken, Ken is the kind of guy, like, he's a really solid hairdresser. I, I work with him a lot, actually, because I love working with him. I think he's a really good atmosphere and, and uh, on set, and he's a very talented guy. But he took the brief and did what, 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 what I was hoping um, he would do, which was go as far as he can. Um, to the point that his images are not just hair shots. They almost don't look like photographs. They kind of look like kind of pieces of art and... Um, I don't even really know what it all means, but I like it. Raf's one of these hairstylists who's really great at like really big hair and good hair. So again, he played a little bit off um, what his character was, and he just he he took the hair and kind of made it more of a character in in the shots. So you've got like this shot of the two girls where the hair is all over the face. Like very rarely do we do that, and the tongue and stuff like that and he took the hair and made it something that he wouldn't normally do and I think that because of that it's very successful he showed that he has a it's kind of a love affair with hair in a way and that's what I like about it. Well Nick, Nick's, Nick's somebody that I've known for a long time because he used to work with Anthony Muscola who I'm very good friends with 
And um, he came up with one of my favourite shoots, the kind of sexiness. He played a little bit to my strength as a photographer and he knew that I loved to do very sexy, strong women. And so there's a lot of hair across the face and it's all sort of like sweaty and slightly wet. And wet hair is actually very hard to do for a hairdresser, it's not. It's not like you don't just spray it and make it wet. You've got to kind of get it right and get this sort of texture right. And it was very organic, that shoot, because he came up with the original ideas and then we developed it and developed it. And then on the shoot, we even pushed it further. Um, so when I look at it now, I'm like, I'm, I'm really proud of it. And it really turns me on as a photographer to shoot like that. I like shoot, shooting very confident women, being very empowered. Kevin's story came from a test shoot that I'd done. I really liked it. I liked it as an idea. And, and we went to Kevin, who I enjoy working with, and I work with a lot as a hairdresser. And he said, I like it, but I'm going to do something different. And he took it, and he took it so far in his own direction that I can't even kind of call it anything to do with me. He's really made it his own, and I think... What I like about it is it's not, it's not even the hair that's got a character, it's like he's created new characters with the hair, so they become animals. You know, for me, it's like they're feral, they're quite unusual, um, little kind of fairy sort of style characters. Um, I've never seen anything really quite like it, so f for me, it's like, wow, we've, you know, done something new. As same, similar, same with Alan, you know, we did something I've never seen before, so... Actually, most of them, I've, we've done something I've never seen before. In a, in a sense, Charlie's are the most um, polished of the shoes. It's really like a fashion story. It's like, you, you look at that story and it has a kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's not even narrative necessary. It's just like every bit pieces together right. You know, you look at the hair, it's like, it makes complete sense. It was kind of interesting to work with somebody for the first time and he was brilliant to work with, really talented, but very much his vision, very much me going, okay, this is your vision. I can turn it and I can twist it and I can make it work like this. And because of that, I think it stands out from the others kind of positively. You, you feel like it's got his stamp on it. Johnny Sapong and, and Tina um, were, were, because they were the later um, stylists, they kind of had to fit into the overall uh, picture of what we were doing with the magazine. So Tina kind of had to go down that road. And I think that given that, she really took that and made it very conceptual and she set the tone for it. And it's 40s inspired um, glamour, but she obviously took the, the, you know, the models and we very much went down that um, kind of Hollywood glamour um, look at hair. Um, that made it interesting, like made it more Hitchcock or um, sort of Orson Welles, uh, Touch of Evil, so the lighting's all film noir -y, but not too much, you know, like, so it's called Frenemies. It's one of my favourite um, actual narrative pieces. And I don't do a lot of narrative fashion stories. It's not something that I'm drawn to as a photographer. I'd rather make films. But I think it was successful because of that. God bless Johnny because he came up with something that I would never do as a, a photographer, something that's very soft, very beautiful, very much about the girls, very much about making them look beautiful and very rarely shoot in that style and with that lighting and with that kind of approach, you know, where I'm working against light or trying to work with light like kind of to place people as opposed to you know sort of um sculpting them a lot of the time what i'll do with light is i sculpt people for 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 beauty and for um portraiture you're looking for the light that makes them look the best whereas with this we were looking for a mood and that's very unlike me he pushed me he pushed me to do something i wouldn't do which is use i don't know pretty lighting um I don't do that. And I like it because of that. I like to push myself. So I like to be pushed by people. When you work with makeup artists and, and hairstylists within the framework of fashion or advertising or editorial, you, you find that these guys are really at the top of their game. They're really, really talented people. And what they're asked to do most of the time is fairly basic. Um, so they don't have that ability to kind of perform to their, their highest level. Um, so 
giving them the opportunity to do whatever they want allows them to really experiment and push things that um, they wouldn't necessarily do for for normal magazines or, or books. What I wanted to do with the portraits and the interviews was I wanted to show the faces behind this great work that these guys do. They're not sort of faceless people. They're, you know, they've got the face, they've got really strong opinions and they do input so much into this world, this world of, 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 of fashion and media. And to kind of, you know, go like, you know, they're heroes, you know, they're kind of heroic in what they do and they're the best at what they do. They're not, there are probably a hundred great hairdressers in the world and I mean really great hairdressers and when it's creative it's cr it's really creative it's not about it's not about selling products or having a good haircut it's about experimenting we don't do it we don't do this job no, no I don't know any of these guys that do this job to make money they do it because they have a love of it they have a real desire to do something that creates this image that you see in a magazine or you see on a, a gallery wall or you know, they can do a good haircut, but they want to create stuff. And I wanted to put faces to the names that do the creative stuff and give them a platform and go, look, these guys, you know, they're as, as important as me to a shoot. You know, if you get a shit hairdresser on a shoot, you're fucked. Brilliant. Thank you. All right. Bye. Wicked. Thank you.